Welcome to the last video in this series, our introduction series before we start making some actual games. So in this video I'm going to show you how to play a little bit with gravity and also I'm going to show you how to create a little platform. So a little bit of revision of how to create a sprite. Uh, so first of all we're going to remove this chunk of code which we used before. Remember those videos are always there for you to refer back to if you've forgotten how to do it. And I'm going to grab my code where I created that sprite. So I'm going to use touches began and what I want to do is create a sprite every time I touch. So I'm going to use that for touch in touches that we've been using a couple of times. And I'm going to grab my code from did move and I'm going to copy and paste that into my touches begin. So don't forget the definition for that sprite node and then I can grab all the rest of the code. So this will create a new instance of that object every time that I tap. Okay, we don't need anything inside the did move. Each time I press it, it will move. So the next thing we need to do is to get the location because we haven't set that yet so let's make sure we set the location to be where the touch has come from so you should be able to remember this from before so touch dot location in self and that'll allow it to move to wherever we tap on the screen and the position will then be the location we could also shorten this we don't need to have that uh, de separate definition we can build into one. I just abstracted that just to make it a little bit simpler for everyone before. So now I have my sprites appearing everywhere where I click within my screen. But currently they're not falling, we haven't set any gravity. So we need to define that gravity within this sprite kit. Once we have that gravity defined within our world, we'll also have to set up physics properties for that particular square. Now if we were to do some collisions, we would have to import uh, SK Physics Contact Delegate. We're not going to play with that yet. Uh, we will do once we get to our games, uh, but we're not going to do that yet, so we don't need to import that into our class. Uh, but within our did move, we do need to define our physics settings. So within itself, we want to set the physics world gravity to equal a vector. Okay, so this vector will define the, basically the x and y force for gravity. Uh, so for some games like Brick Breaker, I do recommend you have an x, um, sort of something pushing it sideways a little bit, but otherwise we can just set the y value to negative one, which will allow things to, to fall fairly slowly depending on their mass. Within Sprite Kit, it does allow you to define friction and, and mass and, and the size of objects, which allow you to impact how gravity affects them as they collide. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep it fairly simple. Let's set up some of these physics properties for our square. So square.physicsbody. First thing we need to do is define the size of it. So we may have a size of the sprite, but we can actually set the physics body to be smaller or larger than it, depending where we want the collisions to, to happen with these particular options. So we need to make sure that our sprite is affected by gravity. So we can do physicsbody.isdynamic equals true. This will make sure that it does actually move because sometimes, like you'll see when we create a platform, we don't want it to be dynamic, we want it to just sit where it is. So it's affected by gravity and if it collides with something else, we want it to be affected by that also. So you can see here how they start to collide with each other and it affects it. That's because we have is dynamic equals true. So now we have all of these items falling they're actually falling off the screen. So we want to make sure we can capture them. So this again will be important when we make our brick breaker later on uh, because we need to have a paddle. So I'm gonna create a function for this, the function we call create platform. And this will be where I create my platform. And the code is very similar to our square that we created, except instead of the square, it's of course gonna be a rectangle. So our rectangle, our platform, will have a fixed location. So it's just going to sit at 250x, 250y, which is kind of a quarter of the way up the screen. We could use our uh, UI bounds that we've used previously, um, but we're not going to do that for now. Okay, so then we need to define our physics property. So we set the physics body to equal the same size of the platform that we've already defined. And make sure that you add child. Uh, that's very important. That's something that we often miss. Then we're going to set our dynamic to false because we don't want it to move every time these squares hit it. And we also want to make sure it's affected by gravity equals false. I just missed an equal sign there. So now I should have my platform. Oh, it doesn't look like it's appearing. I didn't call my function. So even though I defined my function, you've got to make sure that you do call it. So now I have my platform. So now when I click, I can see they all start to pile up. 
So have a little play with these different uh, physics properties that are available, uh, see how they interact with each other and how you can manipulate them for your own purposes. Now we're going to get into building some games.